Today, I've reset the NBA to the year 2010. In my opinion, the single most important offseason in the modern era. An offseason that included one decision that would completely shift the power of the whole league, also change how teams were constructed moving forward. Of course, we all know the story. LeBron takes his talents to South Beach, teams up with Wade and Bosch. Amari signs with New York, joined months later by Carmelo. Chris Paul eventually asks out of New Orleans, Darren Williams out of Utah. Yeah, there was a lot going on in a short period of time. The player empowerment era was upon us. The super team era, well, it was thriving, but uh, in my universe here today, not, not so much the case. Introducing LeBron James, the New York Nick. Yes, you are seeing that correctly. In this alternate 2010 timeline, LeBron and D-Wade couldn't agree on a joint destination. So as per many, many a rumor at that time, LeBron is taking his talents to the Big Apple instead of South Beach. Knicks fans, this is for you. In this timeline, as we can see, the Knicks were still able to lure Amari Stoudemire to town, filling both max contract slots they had open in 2000. 2010, giving LeBron a legit all-NBA running mate to go along with, I mean, a really solid supporting cast. Dude, the Knicks might eat in this era. But speaking of that, uh, unfortunately for LeBron, teaming up with Amari in 2010 would have been amazing, but it wouldn't have meant just a red carpet to the finals. Because still in his prime, Dwayne Wade indeed made the decision to go home. Though he couldn't convince another superstar to join, one could argue he really didn't need to. Because, I mean, come on, look at D-Wade here. He's 95 overall, 28 years old hasn't started having knee problems yet in this timeline uh that's pre-mvp about to win mvp derrick rose carlos boozer joakim noah dude this supporting cast is amazing and they could have had lebron and d wade irl they just had to sacrifice luol dang like that's just what he became the odd man out in this situation but chris bosh was done hooping in canada he decided to return to his home state of texas creating a potentially destructive front court pairing with yao ming if the big man can stay healthy with both nick's max contract slots filled, Carmelo Anthony's impending free agency becomes even more interesting. Chris Paul's contract with the Hornets is nearing its end. I, I mean, maybe in this universe he re-signs with them, tries to build something in Louisiana. We've got two prize picks at the top of the 2011 draft. Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving set to join the NBA. Who bottoms out to pick them? Man, if you couldn't tell, I am very excited for this one. Leave me a prediction for how this universe's 2011 season and beyond will go. D drop a comment right now. Now let's get to and oh my gosh, here we go already. I make all these changes, alternate timeline, a great what if, Russell Westbrook and the Thunder. Are they about to dominate this era, the Thunder, like they usually do? Russ wins MVP, Blake wins Rookie of the Year. That's like an identical stat line to what he put up in real life. Good job, 2K. Greg, Greg Odin. Yo, that caught me off guard. Sixth man of the year, averages 11 and 12. Another great what if from this era. I didn't even intend that. Dwight Howard wins DPOY as per usual, only averaged 17 points a game. And Russell Westbrook takes home uh, most improved as well this man. Man, okay. First team All NBA: Russ, D Wade on the Bulls, Chris Bosh on the Rockets, Kevin Love, and Al Jefferson. What? I was about to say a serious lack of LeBron James on All NBA. First, what? Steph Curry has an 86 slipped in there, and Kobe. What an All NBA second team. An All NBA third: Chris Paul on the Hornets, Brandon Jennings, Dirk Nowitzki, KG, Dwight. Yo, this is interesting already. Scrolling across the playoff brackets, I see Chris Bosh and the Rockets an eight seed. That's kind of tough. I see D Wade in the Bulls of once. What? Oh my word. So D-Wade to the Bulls completely worked out as it should have. Uh, why do I see, hold on, LeBron and the Knicks 47 and 35? Um, That's not good enough. Looking at their stats. Okay, so I have injuries on and LeBron did miss 11 games. So maybe that explains why they weren't uh, of the most elite teams there. But why is LeBron only playing 32 minutes, Amari 29? I get that they have a deep roster, but uh, that's kind of crazy. Interesting. The West looks about right. San Antonio the one seed. Carmelo didn't get traded uh, in this timeline, so he's the two seed with Denver. They look good. Steph and the Warriors way ahead of schedule. Russ, KD, and the Thunder are a four seed. That's interesting. Dirk and the Mavs. Wow. The West is kind of tough, dude. I cannot lie. That's looking scary. I'm not going to lie to you. It's annoying when teams like the Knicks in this case don't play LeBron and Amari a bunch of minutes because other teams, it looks normal. Dirk led the league in scoring, played 37 minutes a night. Melo's up there. Kobe. Actually, Kobe only played 32 minutes a game, so some of the numbers 
numbers look a bit nerfed. It is what it is. Shoot, it just clicked in there. I saw, I think they were like eighth and ninth in the league in scoring. Monte and Steph, that duo is cooking. Monte's a bit banged up, but he should be back for the playoffs, which is good. I, uh, let's see Golden State make a run, sure. There's like a crazy amount of storylines at work here. I fear LeBron and the Knicks are gonna get first rounded by Dwight and the Magic. We've got the Thunder versus Mavs in the West. Yo, this first round's about to go crazy. I know it. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, the first round of the playoffs, yes, very crazy, but but not in ways I predicted at all. I feared OKC would run amok in this timeline, but no, sir. MVP Russ and the boys were handled by none other than 2011 Dirk and his Mavericks. Steph, Monte, and the Golden State Warriors backed up their impressive regular season by taking down Rookie of the Year Blake Griffin and the Clippers while rounding out the West first round. Mellow might be enticed to stay in Denver as his Nuggets begin their playoff run. It's kind of funny in hindsight looking at both the Knicks and Nuggets rosters before the Mellow trade in 2011. Like, they both both might have been better off before the trade. Anyways, uh, we're seeing it here. 29 points a game for Melo in the first round. Looking good. Kind of too bad we lose the Trailblazers, though. I forgot. Brandon Roy, in this timeline, is healthy. He could be pretty good. We saw Greg Oden win, uh, what did he win? Sixth man of the year. Yeah, he did all right in the playoffs. Anyways, maybe we'll hear more from them in the future. Over in the East, two teams I have yet to mention in the video did battle with the six-seed Pacers outlasting the three-seed Hawks. Atlanta advances to face the 2011 Boston Celtics, who had no trouble in their first round series against Philadelphia, but with all due respect, all due respect, uh, I don't think anybody cares about either of those series or those two teams because atop the East playoff bracket, we had Dwayne Wade and the 63 win Bulls romp his former Heat squad in five games. They advance off to the second round where they were set to meet up with LeBron James and the New York Knicks. After a spotty regular season, they cruise past Dwight the Magic in six games. And this is perfect. This whole video is obviously a big what if, but in my timeline, there will be no what if. Wait a minute. What? No. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on. No, no. See, see I went back to the original save file. He, there, there's no Allen Iverson there. Okay. He was a free agent. I don't know when he signed with Chicago. It didn't show up. Um. Okay. Then mystery solved. So Allen Iverson's ring chasing in Chicago. That's crazy. Anyways, what I was saying in this timeline, LeBron and D Wade being teammates would have become a what if. So now to see them playing each other, like it's just, we're fulfilling prophecies here. Great. In year one. Oh no, Danilo Gallagher. Alinari's injured for LeBron's Knicks. That's actually a huge blow, dude. Meanwhile, before we get to those second round series, we have one seven game series in round one and it's Chris Bosh, Yao Ming and the Houston Rockets. Oh my word, they might upset the Spurs. Wait, didn't the Spurs actually lose a 1-8 in 2011 to the Grizzlies, right? Ayo, my old memory never fails me. I double checked. Yes, the Spurs. They lost a 1-8 series to the Grizzlies in 2011 and they might be doing it again. 2K just so accurate with their simulations. But can the Rockets complete the comeback? They are are down five San Antonio. Just got to close this thing out in the clutch. Uh, Tony Parker getting clamped. Good drive inside though. And he misses Yao on the glass. Where do the Rockets go in the clutch? Kyle Lowry, Chris Bosh teaming up. Not on the Raptors. Both Raptor legends, of course. <gasps> Courtney Lee wide open. That was a great look. A pretty nice run for Chris Bosh and the Rockets. Kevin Martin leading the way. What? Chris Bosh 10, 21, and eight. He shot three of 17. Well, at least my boy went out chucking in game seven. That is a wild crazy season for Chris Bosh. But it's now time for the second round of our 2011 playoffs in this timeline. Of course, all eyes on Knicks Bulls, right? In game one, fans were not disappointed as the game was pushed to OT, where Chicago would eventually survive on their home court. 38 points from Derrick Rose to lead the way. Super tough one to lose for the Knicks, especially when they also dropped game two, this time by double digits, 35 and 10 from D. Wade. I feared this series might already be over. However, back in the Big Apple, big performances in tandem from Amari and LeBron, who were finally being tasked with playing big minutes. A game three and game four victory, defending their home court. LeBron, a 37 point takeover in the ladder. All that before Chicago defended their home court once again in game five. It's a 3-2 series. Not a single road victory yet in this one. So, I, I mean, I expect LeBron and the boys to defend home court in MSG. Wow, and they did. They Oh my. Ray Felton? Raymond Felton is also injured. I mean, it's Raymond Felton. He's very important for this Knicks team. Amari puts the exclamation point on this game six. Wow, Raymond Felton battling through injury 30 and 10 to lead the way. He carried
married LeBron. Are you serious? Forcing a game seven? All right, then. Okay, slight detour from the Knicks Bulls series. We've got a game seven between the Pacers and Celtics, so we got to pay attention to it. Uh, yeah, we do, especially when you see it a one point game, 90 seconds left. I know it's 2K being stupid, but I'm just going to call this a Doc Rivers disaster class. KG, though, bailing him out with a great hook shot. Yeah, get the ball in Danny Granger's hands. He was an all star in this era. Collison, good look from the mm, right from the elbow. Yeah, that's money. Ray Allen hit a pair of free throws, of course, for the Celtics. So, Indiana, I believe they still have one timeout remaining. This is kind of their last hope, though. They they need a three. Oh, that's Danny Granger, no hesitation. <laughs> Danny Granger. I, I, I mean, I love it, man. He made the shot. Yep, yep. A great place to jump back into it. Indiana does have the ball. Uh, they don't have... Oh, yeah, they do have their best roster out there. Danny Granger, that's actually a good look. He morphed into a great look from three. That was such a blessing, and he made it. Anyways, does Boston get similar luck here? No, that's not good. Pierce, that was ugly. He shot quick enough, though, that it's a two-for-one situation. for. So Boston's not going to foul. Paul George, rookie Paul George, go to work with the floater in the clutch. Okay, PG, I see you. If they go for a three here, then... Oh, no, Paul Pierce. Wait, that's kind of space. That was that was kind of space. Danny Granger sagged off, but Paul misses. And that was it. A legit upset here. Indiana takes down the Celtics to move off to the East Finals, where they were set to face the winner of Knicks Bulls Game 7. This game looked like a banger with both teams fighting, wrestling for the lead early on. Raymond Felton still coming through for the Knicks. The two teams continued fighting continued battling, exchanging leads deep into the fourth. The Knicks looked like they had a foothold finally, but they are just, they're clinging to that foothold, that lead late in the fourth. Chicago on their home court, still a legit chance to win this thing, especially with that easy inside for D-Wade. Wow, the Knicks are just, they, they are ignoring LeBron in the clutch. Raymond Felton, no chance. I just saw what I just saw with LeBron on the court, Raymond Felton. Chicago knows what they're doing. They are going to ride or die with D-Wade in the clutch. One of their two superstars, D-Wade inside, Joe Kim Noah. Oh, good foul. Amari on the rotation. Wait a minute. Wait, I think Amari might have just fouled out. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Um, well, it's fine. LeBron, you just just gotta end this game right here. And surely the Knicks will go to LeBron now. Yes. Ronnie Brewer defending him. They're flattening it out for Braun with the New York Knicks, his debut playoff run. He gets stopped up. Five seconds left on the shot clock. LeBron going to the rim. Get stopped up at the elbow. Terrible floater. No. Once again, as punishment for these teams not closing it out, we go to Simcast. No Amari for the Knicks. I fear they might get run out of Chicago. No way. Oh my gosh. Tie game. Oh, and it's the Bulls ball. That's so unfortunate for the Knicks. Okay, they need a stop right here. I don't know how this game ended up tied. That was a quick swing during the Simcast. I thought the Knicks had it. Derrick Rose running pick and roll with Boozer. Oh, good help. Nope. Good help defense, but they don't grab the rebound. You've got to be kidding me. Derrick Rose. I think that was Wilson Chandler flying. Flew in for the help defense on Boozer. Didn't foul. Forced the miss. No, Derrick Rose. He's got a chance to end LeBron's debut season with the Knicks. D-Rose pulling up from the elbow. And he misses a game winner too. Bro, this is about to be a one-season simulation with how long this is taking. All right, double OT Knicks Bulls game seven. Still no Amari for the Knicks. The Bull Okay, it's a tie game. Oh my word, the Knicks take the lead. 53 seconds left. And this time we jump in. It's their possession. Okay, LeBron, you're obviously helping manufacture good possessions when I'm not watching. Can you do so right here Get your team a three-point. There it is. LeBron to the rim using his strength. Okay. Now the Knicks need a st Oh my word. Chicago is going to Allen Iverson in the clutch. D. Wade must be fouled out. They're going to AI. Like they're letting him shoot. He misses. Boozer on the glass. LeBron on the D. I think the Knicks might have done it with that stall. Allen Iverson was like, yo, I'm in the game. I'm getting a shot up. LeBron inside Ronnie Turiaf. E. He has an angle. He misses, but he grabs board. Oh. Who needs Amari on the court when Ronnie Turiaf, Gatorade icon and all, grabs offensive rebound, hits both free throws. I think the Bulls got this. As long as they don't surrender a three right here. Allen Iverson back with the... Dude, Allen Iverson is out of control. He, dude, you're 35 years old, 80 overall AI. You've got to chill. And I skipped through the final segment of free throws and fouls. The Knicks do hold on in game seven. A three-point win. Dude, that was crazy. D-Rose had 40. Dwayne Wade, 26, 9, and 7 before fouling out. Wasn't enough. What in the... Dude, LeBron, 18 points. I mean, he had 10 as Raymond felt. Uh, I don't know what's going on in this timeline. LeBron and Amari did not, like, how did they win that game? They didn't even, they're the two best players. 
I, I can't figure it out. See, I knew the Knicks roster super loaded. They don't even need their two stars. They're taking care of business. Anyways, I skipped through every other series in the West. The Spurs and the Golden State Warriors advance. Goodbye, Mellow. I think whoever created adjusted this roster, they might have juiced Steph a little bit too much. 86 overall doesn't seem crazy, but combined with Monte, David Lee, Darrell Wright at an 82. I mean, we're going to let it slide, but still. In the playoffs, LeBron is averaging 24, 7, and 9. He had some pretty big games during that series, but that game six and seven, his numbers weren't amazing. Like Raymond Felton's playing like an all-star, but just keep it going, I guess. Unfortunately, Golden State's run, uh, whether their ratings were juiced or not, they couldn't keep it going. They fell to the Spurs, who are off to the 2011 finals, where they're going to have to meet either the Pacers or Knicks out of the East. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a game seven. I just, this Knicks team, I don't know, dude. I don't know how they're doing it. LeBron is at the free throw line getting MSG MVP chance. That's right. A 10 point lead in game seven. Unfortunately, this isn't a, a huge upset. The Knicks losing. It's not a clutch finish. New York, man, they just keep chugging along. They're going to be in the NBA finals. This time, LeBron with a true LeBron stat line. 27-9-11, the elimination game king. And destiny has been rewritten. The 2011 NBA finals featuring Tim Duncan and the Spurs, LeBron James, and the New York Knicks. Wow, LeBron and Amari must have both had big series against the uh, Pacers in the conference finals because their numbers respectively jumped way up. Fair enough, the duo after a rocky roller coaster season has come through as I thought it would. But these aren't your grandmother's choking 2011 Spurs. Manu, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker all cooking and uh, yeah, they've made it to the finals. This isn't going to be easy, New York. In a rematch of the largely forgotten 1999 NBA Finals, New York flipped the script in game one, stealing one in San Antonio thanks to 29 points from Amari Stoudemire. The Spurs withstood a monster 41 point performance from LeBron in game two, somehow still winning by 20. Tony Parker cooked with 36 and seven for the Spurs at MSG to give them a series lead, but the Knicks had an answer, gutting out a tough two point W in game four. In the clutch, however, the tables turned in game five as a two point home court victory for the Spurs put them back in the driver's seat, at least temporarily, because we know the Knicks are familiar with this spot. They were down three, two to the Bulls. They went to seven against the Pacers. Can they extend the NBA finals? Well, as then, U.S. President Barack Obama once said, yes, they can. As as in the Knicks, they, they are the ones that can't. Did you get that? No, that is stupid. 38, 11, and 10 in game six for LeBron, trying to get himself a finals MVP. However, he will need to come through for his Knicks in game seven to have a shot at that personal hardware. Here we go, San Antonio. Don't choke this now. The Spurs, who once had a lead in the series, only to see it slip away, also had a commanding lead in game seven only to see it slip away as the Knicks were clawing back in the second half. In fact, much to my chagrin, and I do mean that. Okay, I know I have a LeBron jersey currently on my wall. I'm a LeBron stan, okay? I'll admit it. I am very, very disappointed to see that the Spurs not only sacrificed, gave up a lead they had in this game, they end up getting blown out. The Knicks in game seven. What is that, a 9 to 18 point victory? What? In terms of content, a bit of a letdown not to get an epic finish to game seven, but there you see an alternate timeline, 2011, highlighting LeBron not taking his talents to South Beach. Well, apparently it worked out for my guy in 211. No choking this time around for a LeBron-led team in the finals. The Knicks are NBA champions. LeBron ends up posting 26, 8, and 7 in the NBA finals. A very LeBron-esque stat line. He was kind of all over the place during the season simulation, but at the end of the day, he set out what he accomplished to do. I don't know how many titles he promised New York in his press conference, but uh, he's got at least one in this timeline. And we're off to the 2011 NBA draft. I didn't even look at the bottom of the standings from our season. Uh oh, the Cavs. Oh, and the Cavs go with Kawhi. Okay. Yep. I had no idea. So it was the Cavs, then the Bucks, the two seed, uh, the two, uh, the number two pick. In the you know what I'm saying? They're going to take Kyrie. Yep. Of course. Why am I surprised by that? So 2K gets the sim right with Cleveland having the number one overall pick. They take Kawhi. Good pick. The Bucks get Kyrie. Clay Thompson goes to the Suns. Jimmy Butler to the Bobcats. I'm sorry, Jim. Oh my word. I was looking for different roster moves? Uh, did players switch team? Uh, Steph is up to a 90 overall. He is developing way too quickly in this timeline, but whatever. We're going to let him cook. The Thunder disappointed in year one, but Katie's now a 96. They've got James Harden for one more year, and Russ only has one year left. They got to get him to a contract extension. Carmelo Anthony re-signs with Denver. A bit disappointing. I would have loved the chaos. A four-year contract. Uh, I mean, his team still looks pretty good. No big acquisitions, but they should be a contender in the West. We heard nothing from Kobe and the Lakers in year 
tier one. I just realized that they also don't add any, but wait a minute, Tony Allen? That's kind of a fire acquisition for them. LeBron remains with the Knicks, of course, Amari. Their team looks more or less the same. Is that Jamal Crawford returning to the Big Apple? I like it. Most of our NBA in this 2011-12 season looks about the same. D-Rose, D-Wade still there. Wade was a 95. He's down to a 93. Uh-oh, Chicago, you got to make this year count. All right, Russell Westbrook wins MVP for the second straight year. We don't care unless you back it up in the playoffs, guys. Kawhi for the Cavs, a big season wins rookie of the year. Nice. Kyrie wins. What? Oh my, Kyrie's probably stuck behind Brandon Jennings in Milwaukee. Well, White wins DPOY once again, of course. First team all NBA, Russ, Derek Rose. Hey, LeBron, maybe put up some real numbers. Yo, Al Jefferson just getting a lot of love this simulation. All NBA second, Dwight, Blake Griffin, Chris Bosh. Nice in Houston, Steph and Kobe. All NBA third, John Wall, Chris Paul, Paul Pierce. Interesting. Josh Smith, another all NBA team and Tim Duncan. Lord have mercy. All right. Playoff bracket looks like this. Okay. See the one seed. Uh, yeah. Chicago, New York round. Once one. again, the Bulls with Dwayne Wade win 60 plus games. What are the Nick LeBron? I, I mean, he made all NBA first. Maybe Amari got hurt or something. What? Wow. What? Yo, the Bucks won 57 games. Hold on. I'm like Andy throwing away Woody right now for a new toy. The Knicks, uh, they sucked. Uh, Amari and LeBron were healthy. Yeah, they had some injuries. I don't know what happened, but you know what? I don't really care. They're old news. They want to ring. The new team, the new toy, the Buzz Lightyear of this simulation. The one that I care about now, the Bucks. 57 wins with rookie Kyrie coming off the bench. Where did they get Zach Randolph from? And OJ. Okay, they made a big trade with the Grizzlies and obviously fleeced them. Oh my word. Tracy McGrady's on this team. I love it. I love it so much. The transaction report doesn't show that Grizzlies Bucks trade, but again, it obviously worked out for Milwaukee. Um, the, the OKC Thunder won 67 games. Oh my word. Kobe and the Lakers missed the playoffs. That is super tough. We have just a single first round game seven. Once again, it's Chris Bosh's Houston Rockets. Last year, they couldn't get the job done against the Spurs. This time they're pushing that loaded Steph Curry warrior team to the brink. Chris Bosh is now on the court. All right, classic 2K coaching. He was not on the court for some reason. Doesn't matter. He's out there now. The Houston Rockets and game seven, a chance to upset the second seed Golden State Warriors in the first round. Kyle Lowry dribbling the clock out for the win. Yes! Battier, it is over. What a clean look. Battier knocks it down. That's amazing. Elsewhere in the Western Conference, OKC cruised in round one. Chris Paul and the Hornets will face them in round two. San Antonio gets upset by the Mavs. They get swept in round one. No finals return for them. In fact, we will have two brand new teams in the finals. Of course, the Knicks got dusted aside by the Bulls. Kyrie and the Bucks have moved on. We've got Boston Orlando in round two. That series are only, in fact, in round two to go to game seven. Love when a coincidence comes together like that Boston, man. They choked in round two against Indiana in year one. Wow, and unless we get a miracle here for Boston, I think they've fallen short once again. Just like in real life, no real difference here. Kind of an unceremonious end to the big three Celtics era. Dwight's DPOYs finally coming through to mean something. Yup. As yes, the Magic advance off to the East Finals, where of course they're playing D-Wade and the Bulls. We all wanted something big from the Bucks, but uh, one season too early maybe. And I fear we've been on a crash course this whole season to an okay see Chicago NBA Finals unless Houston can make it happen. We obviously saw LeBron have his non-Miami playoff run. He won an NBA title. Maybe we're seeing that for D-Wade or maybe Chris Bosh. 22 and 15 averages in the playoffs for the Rockets. Keep it going, brother. Oh my gosh. No. Oh, what? How? 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 I'm not going to jinx the Rockets by looking at the Thunder roster and, and asking how they're losing, but just trust me, that's in my mind. Houston could close the series out right here, right now. Oh my goodness. It's not even a clutch finish in game Six. Wow, Houston. Oh, we're watching the final seconds of this game up from the press box next to Daryl Morey, who looks like an absolute genius for bringing Chris Bosh into Houston as the former Raptor star has indeed led the Rockets to the promised land. I mean, the job's not finished, but wow, what a run. We might get to see old man Yao win a ring as well. However, yeah, obviously the Chicago Bulls, they're just a wrecking ball right now. The duo of Derrick Rose and Dwayne Wade carrying the... Okay, wait a minute. Carlos Boozer is banged. Oh, he's out for the season. No, he's just affected for the season. CJ Watson is out. Oh, I don't know, Houston. It's a tall task. And unfortunately, a tall task turned out to be a huge understatement on my part because having added D-Wade to an already dominant core, the 2012 Bulls simply dominated the NBA Finals. A healthy Derrick Rose dropped 39 and 11 in game one. He dropped 36 and nine in game two. D-Wade having successfully passed him the baton did come through 
through with 30 points in game three as the Bulls went up 3-0. All double digit victories. And now I kind of feel like Seth Rogen in that Step Brothers scene. Uh, Chris Bosh and the Rockets making the finals seems a little messed up now because they were no competition. Or wait a minute, we could be seeing the start of something super historic here. Houston only down three. Kyle Lowry in the corner up, uh, corner up to Shane Battier gets fouled on a three. Okay, Shane Battier missed one of the three free throws after he was fouled from beyond the arc, but Dwayne Wade missed one of two for the Bulls in uh, in response. So it's still a two-point game. If I'm the Rockets, I'm running that three-point curl play to Shane Battier like they did in the Eastern Conference playoffs or, or the Western Conference playoffs, I should say, against Golden State. Yeah, yeah. wait, they actually are doing it. They, I, oh, but Kyle Lowry doesn't pass it to him this time. He wanted the glory for himself. Uh, unbelievable, Kyle. It's okay, Lowry. You'll go find your way to Toronto, I'm sure, and have some success later on in your career. But for now, it's the Chicago Bulls who in our revised 2012 timeline with Dwayne Wade added to the core absolutely dominate the NBA playoffs. A sweep in the NBA finals, pretty anticlimactic, but what can you do, man? Derrick Rose has become a full-fledged superstar, 35-9 and nine in the finals, and oh yeah, they still have this guy named Dwayne Wade. So, through two seasons of our what-if timeline, LeBron with a ring in New York, Dwayne with one in Chicago. I mean, it worked perfectly. Everybody's happy, but uh, we should probably speed run one more season just to make someone unhappy. That somebody is definitely Damian Lillard, who gets drafted by the Bobcats, although he joins Jimmy Butler, so that's fun. Uh, a Disney ends up going to Toronto. Good for you, Anthony. Wow, Chris Paul, after all that hype, did stay loyal, re-signed with the Hornets. But it's another superstar point guard from this era that is making it his era. Derrick Rose to go with his finals MVP, a monster MVP regular season. He's, of course, first team All-NBA with Russ. Chris Bosh, no way, Kevin. Le Al Jefferson, three straight All-NBA first teams. Let's just ignore that and move on. Dog, I don't think Utah's made the playoffs once. Like, how is he? What is he? First team All-NBA 2011-12. Oh my word, he won DPOY. I didn't even show Whoever it. Whoever made this created version of Al Jefferson obviously juiced his rebounding because he's averaging, I mean, okay, for uh, 16 rebounds a game. Sure, give him DPOY. <laughs> That's hilarious. It is now the Al Jefferson. What if he became the GOAT simulation? Uh, anyways, never mind. Uh, Chicago 64 wins. Anthony Davis led the Raptors to the playoffs. The Knicks a little bit better with LeBron. OKC, are they finally going to come through in the playoffs, man? They've been choking year in, year out. Fair enough. In context, that's a crazy season from Derrick Rose. The best score in the league by almost four points a game. He definitely led the league. Well, okay, he finished uh, fourth in assists, but but still the point stands. Golden State, Steph Curry, they get their revenge on Houston in an exact rematch of last season. Well, oh my God, I didn't even realize this was unfolding. LeBron and the Knicks lose to the Raps in seven Get What? Oh yeah, yeah, totally with uh, DeAndre Jordan, DeMar DeRozan, Andrea Bargnani's not even playing, mind you, rookie Anthony Davis, Samuel Dallenbear. I mean, of course. Yeah, just so much better than LeBron, even with Amari. Wow, Amari he did get injured. Interesting. But even still, this is a way better team. I mean, come on, dude. Anyways, in the second round, I didn't show it, but this Timberwolves team was up 3-0 on the Thunder, who have clawed all the way back. Mini was so close to a wild upset. The Thunder have been such a disappointment this video. Wow, but it looks like this is their year. They gotta be destined, bro. A 3-0 series comeback. We've got OKC San Antonio in the 2013 West Finals. We've got a rematch. Chicago, Milwaukee in the East. Wow, and we don't get a repeat champion in 2013. The Bulls lose to Milwaukee. In the year 2000, in big 2013, this is a championship contending roster. Jennings, Bogut, Irving, Zach Randolph battling injury, Corey Maggette still kicking around. I mean, they are very deep. You got to give them that. But it appears it's finally time for the OKC Thunder. Wait a minute. Wait, there it is. There it is. In six games, OKC does win their ring. Kevin Durant, a monster stat line, four finals MVP. I say finally because whenever you simulate the LeBron era, OKC, I mean, Russ won two MVPs. I'll show you that right there. Uh, they always simulate well, so it's almost a given. I reset the NBA back to 2010. In my opinion, the most important offseason and season in recent NBA history. We saw LeBron in the Knicks, D-Wade in the Bulls, then of course the OKC Thunder walk away as champions. These videos are always so much fun to put together. Let me know what other what-if situations you might want to see. Let me know if you enjoyed this one, the results, the outcomes, and uh, check out another one from here on my channel.